This is Ellis Pinsky, or Baby Al Capone. When he was just 15 years old, he took part in one of the biggest cryptocurrency heists of all time. $24 million, stolen from a native wallet owned by the cryptocurrency investor Michael Turpin. Pinsky used this money to fuel his high roller lifestyle, renting luxury supercars, dropping bags at Louis Vuitton, and charting private flights. Pinsky was eventually caught and sentenced to a juvenile detention center, but his involvement in the heist made him a very well-known figure in the world of OG users. Even at a young age, he was always fascinated with technology, diving deep into the realms of hacking and programming. This fascination eventually led him to online forums, like OG users, where he discovered buying, selling, and most importantly, stealing OG usernames. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, let me explain. An OG username is a rare type of social media account that is usually worth a few thousand dollars. The only thing that's special about these accounts is that the username is original. But what does that even mean? Well, it means that there are no numbers, underscores, or any other character that takes away from the original meaning of the name. If you want to sign up for the Snapchat account with the username Ironic, you can't because it's my account. Or you could theoretically settle for Ironic underscore, Ironic12345, or any other combination like that. Anyway, these accounts are highly sought after in a specific corner of the internet, and when Ellis finds this market, he's hooked. The thing is, hacking $24 million and stealing at Provoke on Twitter are pretty much the exact same process. They both require a takeover method known as sim swapping. Sim swapping is a technique where hackers convince the phone company to transfer the victim's phone number to a SIM card in their possession, giving them the ability to reset passwords and receive 2FA codes through the stolen number. If you want a more in-depth explanation, I'll leave a link in the corner. However, after some trial and error and a lot of networking, Pinsky finds himself in a group of SIM swappers just like himself. There, he meets his new best friend, Nick Truglia. They started working together on big simming targets. Nick would get the phone numbers and handle the doxing side of things, while Pinsky was the actual caller and was responsible for actually gaining access to the accounts. Together, they made a great team, and with just a few more recruits, they'd basically be unstoppable. They go for bigger and bigger targets, until eventually they catch word of Michael Turpin's massive crypto wallet. From there, the group actively began monitoring him, trying to acquire as much information as possible, and through a series of internet loopholes, they managed to gain enough information to commit a successful SIM swap. Once Ellis and his associates were inside Michael's crypto wallets, they find a wallet with $900 million in it, but couldn't gain access. They keep searching, and eventually they find a recovery phrase in one of Michael Turpin's files. This led to a different crypto vault. Now this vault had $24 million, which is significantly less than the other one, but still nothing to complain about. They quickly began transferring the funds to various accounts, and within just a few hours, they'd successfully transferred and laundered all $24 million. When all is said and done, they used the stolen funds to fuel their insane lifestyles. Pinsky went on a huge spending spree, renting luxury cars, purchasing high-end clothing and accessories, and even chartering private jets. But this wouldn't go on forever, as the police eventually caught up with them. You see, when you rob someone with a net worth as high as Michael Turpin, you can't just expect them to take it sitting down. Turpin launched a full-scale investigation and filed a lawsuit against Pinsky and his associates for the theft, seeking $71.4 million in damages. He made a very smart choice and waited until Pinsky turned 18 to charge him as an adult. Now, Nick got arrested for a different crypto hijacking, apparently, and served 18 months in prison with the two cases between him. Pinsky was never arrested, but just sued directly instead. It took almost four years to resolve this case, but in December 2022, Pinsky was ordered to pay back all the money he stole, which he did to the best of his ability. I can't find his sentence if he got one, maybe somebody in the comments can help me out. But for Nick, after receiving the 18 months, was ordered to pay an additional 300 grand in damages. They even found the guys less involved in the scheme, Connor Freeman and Ricky Hanshermaker, who were sentenced to 20 months and 10 months in prison respectively. Dude, I'm just putting this out there. Anyone out there who has my dick pic on their hard drive, you're a fucking weirdo. I see. Yo, I saved it. You guys. Well, my hard drive, my privacy. Wait, Chloe, you, Chloe, you fucking saved it. Bro, <laughs> that pic from <laughs> who sent it to you, nigga? <laughs> oh my, I'm gonna pull my shit. Bro, why? Like, what is wrong? <laughs> 
<laughs> Bro, he said I should. <laughs> I never should have friended you. <laughs> Bro, you Boy, just cannot. Yes, in that picture, you cannot see my balls, bro. In that picture, bro. No, it's because you just came to like blood. twenty times. That's about all the information I have about this case. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other ones. Peace. Hey, fuck you, mate. Yeah, yeah.